Well, thank you so much for joining me again today. My name is Adeola. You're welcome to the show, Ola Books Readers Review. This is another episode, episode eight. Wow. When I started, I didn't know I would take it this far. I'm like, let me just do one video. Let me see what it's going to look like. Here I am doing the eighth episode, and I knew I would keep going because each episode gets better and each episode gets more comments. Thank you very much for your review. It has really, 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 really helped and encouraged me. Thank you. Good job to you all. All right. So today I'm going to continue reading from where I stopped the last time, but I will tell you, as always, where you can purchase all of my books. All our books, internationalselfhelp.com, and many more online bookstores that I have shared the links below. So after watching this video, please go down below to check out all of those links and pick any convenient sites for you to purchase from. Most of these sites will ship it to you for free. Also, there are links to previous episodes of ORR. There are seven links to the previous episodes down below. So check them out so that you will know where we're coming from. With that being said, let's go back into reading. I'm always excited to read. I love stories and I'm happy that God gave me that gift to write stories. So I'm doing what I like doing. You can pick up your passion too. What are some things you like doing? Pick them up. Pursue your passion. You'll be surprised where it will lead you. All right, let's read Colors of Love, chapter three. I'm starting from page 23. She started getting ready for work. She went into the bathroom. As she showered, she sang William Murphy's worship song she loved so much. Praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. Check out that song. I love it. She was so caught up in her worship that she lost track of time. She was running late. Her saving grace was that she had picked out her outfit the night before. She had chosen a black pants suit with a red camisole, a gift from Tosin. She matched it with black high-heeled shoes and a black bag. She wore red lipstick with red eyeshadow. Taking a quick look at herself in the mirror, she said, Too hot for the devil. I am the wrong person to mess with. She grabbed the car keys and rushed out of her apartment. She was a secretary at a law firm. The Marcos family case was going to court that morning and she could not afford to be late. She said a brief prayer about the heavy traffic, scoffing a little afterwards, thinking that was a waste of time. However, it was not. God favored her. An accident occurred right after the green light had allowed her to drive into the main street. It was a hectic day for her at work. When she checked her phone at work, she had missed six calls. Two of them were from her father. She hoped there was no problem. Two were from Tosin. She left a heartwarming message for her. She smiled. One was from Yeni, and the last one was unknown. There were three calls to return. She decided to call Tosin first, then her dad. He just wanted to hear her voice. His words took some work tension off her. She promised to call him back on her way home. Then she called her dad. He wanted to know if she liked her new job and new apartment. She said she did and that was it. Then she called her friend back. She was happy to hear that she was terrific and that she had found her interest in hairdressing. Her sister's friend, Ihoma, who owned a hair salon, was allowing her to come in to help. She was in a sort of apprenticeship, and she got a few dollars every week. Another exciting thing happening to Yeni was that she had joined a Bible-believing church. Her mind was busy. She was moving on with her life. Harry was happy for her. She needed to give her mom a call. It's been about three days since their last discussion. She would call her when she got off. As she rose from lunch, she received a text message from Tosi. Dinner tonight? Sure. What time? Seven? Where? Dino steak. I'll pick you up. 7.30. See you then. 
love a boy, she said under her breath, smiling. This was 3.30 p.m. She was winding things up for the day and was thinking about her date tonight. She got up at 4. She had 30 minutes to drive home, maybe 45, with traffic. She would barely get some rest before the date. Selecting the right outfit might take her some time. Tosin was very romantic, and he liked sexy outfits. At a quarter to four, a package was delivered to her. It had her name boldly written on it. Who could it be from? She waited until she got into her car before she opened it. It was a lovely red dress sent by Tosin. He was too romantic. She called him, told him she loved the dress, but loved him more. See you tonight. Kai woke up with a headache. It was unseasonably warm. The night before she had the hair conditioner on again, she must be coming down with something. Hopefully not the flu. As she rolled over in her bed, her mind went back to the night before, during the dinner. Did she see a shadow on the Tosin's eyes when she said they should fast and pray? Surely he wasn't hiding anything from her. The food was good, and the wine tasted even better. Karen was enjoying the evening, giggling from ear to ear at Tosin's frequent jokes. She was feeling very relaxed in his company, as usual. Then he became quiet and was staring at her, lovingly. She felt naked as she, he seemed to embrace her with his stay. What? she asked. I want to marry you, he whispered. I want you waking up in my bed every day. I want to see you carrying my babies and making my home a comfortable place for me. Carrie, I want our wedding preparations to commence immediately. Silence. Carrie felt her heart beating so loudly she thought she could hear it. Carrie, say something. The dream, she stammered. What dream? The dream I told you about the last time. I had it again last night. She blotted it out. Sitting back with a sigh and folding his arms, Tosin said, What about it? I think we should pray, she said. About what? I already told you that I am not about to die, and I am not running away on our wedding day. I love you too much to do that to you. You are getting unnecessarily anxious. Okay, how about we go to church for premarital counseling? She suggested. I don't get it, Carrie. The dream is about me, and I'm not worried. Why are you? Because I love you. And you will soon be a part of my life. It's not like I'm worried. I just think I'm having this dream so that we can do something about it. I am not going to counsel him with you. But why not? Your father is part of the team. What do you think he would say? He'll probably discourage you from marrying me. Okay, Tosin, will you do me a favor? Let's have a two-day fasting and prayer and ask God to reveal the plan of the enemy concerning our wedding. After the prayer period, we can go ahead and let our parents know that we want to begin wedding plans. Is that too much to ask? No, it's not, he said, sadly. All right, I'm, I'm going to stop reading here. I will continue from page 27, the last time. I mean the next time so I just wanted to say something about that conversation right there I think these are the kind of conversations that uh, two people planning to get married should you know have it usually helps a conversation about what the wedding day will look like a conversation about what the future afterwards will look like and especially if you are having visions like Carrie was having visions you want to talk about that you don't just want to pray alone about that. You should pray, but you also want to talk about it. 
and you should not be the only one praying. Women do that a lot. You pray. Very good. But you should not be the only one praying. Your partner should be praying too. All right. Thank you so much for your time today. If you like this video I will, and you would like more of it, I would like for you to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you so much for all you do. Until next time. Bye and stay blessed.